A while back, I made a video on how to create custom table view cells, and this has actually been one of my most popular videos, so thank you for the amazing support on that. But a few people didn't want to see how to make table view cells with nib files, so today we're going to be doing how to make table view cells using coding at all. <laughs> Terrible grammar, <laughs> but there you go. So yeah, let's get started. All right, so first things first, we're going to go ahead, open up Xcode, create a new Xcode project. This is going to be a single view application. And then for the project name, we're just going to go ahead and call this custom table view cell. So now that we're in the project, we're going to go to our main.storyboard and delete the view controller that's inside of there. Then we're going to go ahead and replace that with a table view controller. Then with the table view controller we created, we need to head over to the attributes inspector and call it the initial view controller. This of course will make it the first view controller that loads up. So now once that's done, we need to go ahead and go back to our view controller that Swift and switch the class of it to table view controller colon UI table view controller. Then head back over here to our main.story board and go back to the identity inspector and name the class of the view controller that we created to table view controller. That way the things that we put in code will modify the things on that view. So now heading back into our table view controller, we're going to go ahead and create the two functions that are necessary. These are functions that are stored automatically with table view controllers. The first one is going to be cell for row at index path. Then we're going to have another function that's going to be number of rows in section. Those are the two very vital functions to get a table view controller set up. So that's all we need. But heading back up to the top of our view controller .swift, we need to go ahead and create a structure that will hold the cell data. So in the cell data, I want to go ahead and have two variables. One of them will be the image, and the second one is going to be the message to go along with that image. This is going to be a fairly standard setup for a lot of people. So we're going to mess around with this. So go ahead and create a struct. This is going to be cell data, open, close, curly bracket. Then also inside of our cell data, we want to create two variables. The first one is going to be our image. So you're going to say let image colon UI image. And then I'm going to make this optional. So just go ahead and put a question mark, but it doesn't matter. Then for our message, we're going to go ahead and say let message colon string have that as an optional as well. Then heading back into our table view controller, we're going to create a variable that will hold an array of those structures that we just created or the an array of that cell data. So you're just going to say var data equals an array of cell data, open close parentheses. Then once we have that array, we're going to go ahead and fill it up with some information. So we're going to go into our view did load and say data will be equal to array cell data dot init in the which we're going to go ahead and provide an image. Now for my image, I just chose my previous thumbnail for my last video, but you can choose whatever image you want. But you're going to take that image, go over to the assets.xc assets and just import it right in there. And now you can use it in that array. So go back to your image and start typing in the name of your image. Then for the message here, this is of course going to be whatever you want, but I just said how to make a portal because it just corresponds with the thumbnail. Then once all that's fine and dandy, we're gonna go ahead and create our new custom cell. So we're gonna say file, new file. This is of course going to be a Swift file. And then inside of here, we're gonna create a class. So this class will be called custom cell and it's gonna have the super class of the UI table view cell. And then of course, because you created this file, you need to say import UI kit. But jumping right back into the custom cell here, we're gonna go ahead and say init. And then this of course is the provided in it with a UI table view cell. So it should just provide it for you, but it is in it with style and reuse identifier. So when you register or call this table view cell later, it's going to go ahead and call that initializer for you. And this is where we're going to set up our constraints, but we'll do that in just a second. For now though, we need to go ahead and create two variables inside of this. This is of course going to be your message and your image. Very simple. So this will be var message colon string with a question mark to make it optional and then var image colon UI image optional as well. And now that we have those variables, let's start putting them in stuff. So we're going to create a message view and an image view. So we're going to say var message view colon UI text view will be equal to open close curly brackets, open close parentheses at the end of that. And then in the center there, we're going to say var text view will be equal to a UI text view. And then we're going to go ahead and return that text view. Now in between that, we want to go ahead and say text view dot translates auto resizing mask into constraints into false. This is very important when you do constraint work. Now you get this override here that says cannot override with a stored property image. Now that's saying that because with a UI table view cell, there's actually already a variable called image. Now you can either use that 
or use a different variable. In this case, for tutorial purposes mainly, I'm just gonna go ahead and say var main image will be equal to a UI image. And then now we need to go ahead and apply that main image to an image view. So we're just gonna go ahead and say var main image view colon UI image view will be equal to open close curly brackets, open close parentheses. And then in the middle of that, we're gonna say var image view will be equal to a UI image view. And then we're gonna return that image view and then of course say translates auto resizing mask into constraints and set that to false. So boom, we have all the variables, the objects that we need to get started. So let's go ahead and start adding it onto our view. So in the initializer here, we're gonna go ahead and say self.add sub view in the which we're gonna go ahead and add our main image view and our message view. Simple as that. Now there's two methods that I'll go over in this video. The first method is gonna have the image to the left and then the message to the right, just side by side. After we do that method, we're gonna go ahead and look into the YouTube method is what I call it because it has the image view on top and then text underneath. But of course this could apply to Instagram and a bunch of other things. But first off, let's start with them side by side. So for our first anchor, we're gonna go ahead and say main image view dot left anchor will be equal to the self dot left anchor or basically we're attaching it to the left side of the table view cell. And you can think of that for any of these further constraints that I'm applying. So for the top anchor, top anchor. For the bottom anchor, bottom anchor. You just want to go ahead and say self.bottom anchor. But after this, we want to go ahead and say our width anchor, and this is going to be different to everyone. We'll actually play around with this number a bit, but I'm going to go ahead and say self.widthanchor.constraint will be equal to my self.height anchor. And this is going to make it so the image view is in a square format. So that's it for our main image view for now. Now let's go ahead and apply stuff to the message view. So for our message view.left anchor, you're going to set that equal to the self.mainImageView.right anchor. Again, that's just putting them side by side. Then we're going to say message view dot right anchor dot constraints will be equal to the self dot right anchor. So we're going to go ahead and apply it to the right side of the table view cell. Then of course, top and bottom. And that's it. So now we have these views. Now let's add information into them. Now you can't do this in the initializer because that information isn't initially provided. It's something that you add after the initializer. So what we need to do is apply this to our layout subviews. So you're gonna say layout subviews, it should give you an overwrite function. And then you're gonna say super dot layout subviews. And then after that, you're gonna say if let message equal message, as we said, we made all of our variables optionals. So we wanna make sure that they are not empty. So if let message equal message, open close curly brackets, message view dot text will be equal to message. <laughs> Simple as that. Then do the same thing with our image. If let image equal main image, then we're gonna say main image view dot image will be equal to image. And that's it for our custom cell. Let's go ahead and put this on our table view. So it's actually fairly simple. What you're first gonna do is register it with your table view cell. So it has an identifier. Uh, you would normally do this in a storyboard the exact same way. You create a cell, you give it an identifier, a reuse identifier to be exact, and you can reuse that cell over and over again. This is to help with memory management as well as make it a lot easier for you to call cells. So self.tableview.register in the which you're going to go ahead and register custom cell.self. So that's just registering that cell and then you want to give it an identifier. I just went ahead and gave it the identifier of custom. Then once you have that, you're going to start using that registered cell. So you're going to say if let cell equal self.tableview.dq reusable cell with identifier in the which you're gonna go ahead and put in custom. It's the same identifier that you use to register the cell. Then to be able to use the variables and the functions that we would have on our custom cell, we need to say as custom cell. Then we're gonna go ahead and return that cell. And now that's our cell. So let's start applying data into the cell. So we're gonna say cell.main image will be equal to data for the index path.row dot image. So we just put the image that we applied earlier for our data into the table view cell. And we're gonna do the same with our message. So cell.message will be equal to our data for the index path.row.message. Done. So that's it for setting up our cell. Now how many cells are there going to be? So for the number of rows in section, you're just gonna go ahead and return your data.count. Simple as that. 
And then just so we can see how multiple cells would look, let's go ahead and duplicate the data over and over again. Now, let's go ahead, build and run this, and let's see what we have. And as you can see, we have our glorious custom cells. Now, obviously, they need work. Um, you can touch these up to your heart's content. You can see that the image maintained a square aspect ratio, and the text view is right next to it. Now, let's see how does it deal with long text. So let's go back over here to our data, and let's just duplicate how to make a portal multiple times. Now build and run that and let's see what we get. Now, as you can see, our text view there doesn't resize the text to fit the cell. The text view is scrollable for one, so you can just scroll up and down to see the data, but that is not a good user experience. So let's go ahead and fix that. So first thing we need to do is head back over here into our custom cell and we're gonna go to our message view and say text view dot is scroll enabled and set that to false. So this is going to make it so the text inside of our text view now determines the size of the text view rather than the scrollable view that we had inside of the text view. Hopefully that made sense. <laughs> now, if you were to build and run this now, it would still cut it off because the table view cells want to maintain the height that they have. So what we need to do is make them automatically resize to the contents inside of it. So we're gonna go ahead and go back over here to our view controller.swift and inside of your view did load, you're gonna say self.tableview.rowheight will be equal to UI table view automatic dimension. Very simple thing to call to just make it automatically resize. Now we're gonna have to mess around with some things with this happening now, but it is now resizing the cell based on the contents inside of it. But now to reduce memory usage and also make this thing work, we need to give it an estimated row height. So we're gonna say self.tableview.estimated row height will be equal to 200. Set this, of course, as close as possible to what you think your height is going to be. So now with the automatic stuff in place, let's build and run this. And you'll be able to see that our cell, the, the cell with the most text, doesn't any longer have the scrolling enabled, but you'll also be able to see that as I scroll up, the cell loads all that information into the cell properly and resizes things. That's part of the whole layout subviews because layout subviews is called when it's needed. So in the first time you load it, it's not needed, but afterwards, after you scroll up and down, it is needed and therefore it resizes the cell accordingly. So what we need to do is head back over here to our self row at index path. And right after we add our message, we're just going to say cell dot layout subviews. And that should make it so we no longer have to scroll up to get the desired effect we want. Now, also along with this, that you notice that main image view got really, really big because it was trying to fill the whole cell based on the image that's inside of it. Now, the first variable we're going to mess with is the width. So I'm just going to set the width anchor to a constant of 100. Now let's build around that and let's see what happens. And as you can see, we have our text right off to the right of it, and that's good, but the image height is still too big. So we're just going to mess around with that for a little bit. And you'll also notice that it laid out the subviews before we needed to scroll up or down and before the cell needed to load properly. So we're good there in that aspect, but we of course need to fix the height. So what we're going to do is set the height anchor of our main image view equal to the constant of 100, set that to active and make that true. And let's see what we get there. And as you can see, boom, uh, we get a properly sized image. Now, of course, you can play around with all of those numbers as much as you want, but for now, I'm pretty happy with the outcome of that one. Again, you'll have more variables inside of your own cells and you'll be able to play around with things on your own. I'm just showing you generally how things would work. If you notice the cell's a bit too tall, play around with the variables that affect the height of, a, of the cell and it'll probably fix it. But now, as I promised, we're gonna go ahead and put the image on top and the message underneath. So what we're gonna do is delete every constraint we have except for the left and top anchor of our main image view. We're just gonna keep those. Now for our right anchor, we're just gonna set it equal to our self.right anchor. That way it's left, top, right, and it just fills the scene properly. Then for the bottom anchor here, we want it to be right above our message view. So we're just gonna say main image view dot bottom anchor will be equal to our self dot message view dot top anchor. So again, that's just the bottom of the image view right on top of the top of the message view. The message view is gonna be like here, image view is gonna be up here. Just try to plan this out in your mind and you should be able to figure it out. Now for our message view, it's pretty straightforward. You're just going to go ahead and say message view left anchor will be equal to self dot left anchor. Message view dot right anchor will be equal to our self dot right anchor. Message view dot bottom anchor will be equal to our bottom anchor. And it's, it's simple as that. That's all we need for our message view. But building and running that, you can obviously see that the main image view height is affecting the height of the cell. So what we're going to do is say main image view dot height anchor dot constraint. We'll set that equal to the constant 
of 250. Again, play around with the numbers until you get something that you like yourself. And there you have it. That is what I end up with. Now I also went up to the main image view and set the content mode, or basically the way the image fits inside of the view to scale aspect fit. That way it just has the normal aspect of the image, but it fits inside of the image view. And that should give us a pretty good idea of what things would look like. And you can of course, play around with that as well. But building and running it, you can quickly see that here we have it. We have an image view on top, message view underneath, and you'll notice that if we have a larger message view, that will make a larger cell. And everything carries through properly. Anyway, hopefully you guys enjoyed this video. If you did, be sure to hit that like button down below. If you have any critiques, be sure to leave that down in the comment section down below. Although I don't respond to every comment, I read every single one of them. And if there are critiques on my code, I try to incorporate that a bit more because I make these videos for you guys. And as a developer, you're trying to get better and better. And this channel was never meant to be, oh, I'm a master at everything and I'm just gonna give you a bits of my knowledge, no. I'm learning these things as I go along. And when I publish a video on how to do something, that's how I did it for my own application. It may or may not be the best way to do things, or a ter it might be a terrible way to do things, but it's some way that I figured out how to do something. So with making a video like this, I hope I came back and expressed a better way of doing things. Anyway, that's it. Have yourself a fantastic day, and I will see you in the next video. Bye.